Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. How come your voice just got deeper? That's my man voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't use it often. Okay, go ahead. Start talking to the mic. You don't have to be nervous. Oh, hi. You know, we did this on the Man Manco show one time, and I was like, he did the same thing. He's like, yeah, just start talking. I was like, hello. Hi. What you doing? And I was like, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> and then, you know, Tamala, Tamala was on the show with us, and she was like, hey, Diva. Oh. oh, my God. He loved her so much, and she rocked it, dude. It was awesome. So you're on the Man Cow show? Mm-hmm. When I worked at the Hangout Bar and Grill. Oh, That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. It was really, really fun. We're going to bury that one in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Is that better? Mm-hmm. No, now they can better. see your face and your dimple. <laughs> see what I mean? Be proud of the dimple. <laughs> the dimple's there. The one yeah. dimple game. Right there. Yeah. That's gonna be when you guys have like a uh, catchy little like slideshow. <laughs> it, it's gonna be your face. Don't give him any. <laughs> I'm no, already it's writing it's it down. <laughs> <laughs> dimple cam. <laughs> dimple cam. No. That's when it just zooms in. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I've been trying to avoid that for a long, long time. Seriously, I when I used to go clubbing when I was younger, there was a group of women that were older than us. Well, older than me. They literally would call me Dimples. No. I'm walking through the Dimples. No, stop. No, 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 no. We don't want to do that. Oh, no. It's terrible. The so, ones on your back or in your cheek? This guy. <laughs> you, I don't know what you were wearing. No. Was... <laughs> no. But, I'm to try yeah, to catch your so... attention. They're like, oh, look. Hey, Dimple. Hey, yeah. Dimple. I was like, no. Did they give you the round? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, no. <laughs> so, welcome to Put the Ball Down podcast. I am your host, Coach <laughs> Norm. All the way over there is my hermano, Corey, Coach Corey. And we have a very special guest. Very special guest. Um, mm-hmm. In my eyes, a true inspiration to female bosses out there and somebody I would want my daughter to mm-hmm. look up to. That's very sweet. Owner of Vern's Tavern Mm -hmm. in Elgin, Illinois. Yes. We have Jamie Berry. Hello. Thanks for being (laughs) here, Jamie. Thank you, guys. I'm super excited, actually. A little nervous, but super excited. Okay. I met you through Corey. Corey's like, hey, somebody who has a bar. She's super (laughs) dope. She has a really cool staff. And all my buddies go over there. We should stop by there. So we went. And I had the time of my life. We had first Fridays. Yeah, that was actually our first first Friday. So I'm glad it went well and that you had fun. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. We have the next one coming up this next first Friday. Yeah, I told Corey, lock me down. I'm going. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) Good. So you own a bar. Mm -hmm. A female that owns a bar. Just saying is really, really cool. (laughs) It's kind of unreal sometimes. Uh, I don't think I let it sink in right away when we opened. And after a while it did finally hit me and i'm like oh yeah this is all my responsibility now but it's going really well and that's super awesome and yeah I, Corey knows the staff is absolutely amazing they are and i give them all the credit all the time that's fantastic and yeah it's kind of unreal just to be like yeah this is the bar and i happen to own it I'm not just drinking it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Going there that first time for that first Friday and Mm -hmm. seeing how you interact with your staff and with your clientele, it's like she knows what she's doing. (laughs) Like there's a reason why she owns a bar. A lot of people talk about it. It's a different thing to be about it. Yeah, it's long hours, lots of work, um, lots of experience. So it's not I don't expect anyone to jump into something and be absolutely perfect at it. I think that there's a lot of behind the scenes that I'm truly lucky right now to be in a position to share that with a lot of people, hopefully while they are along their journey, I feel super blessed to pass that along. And so far, I've had a lot of of opportunities to do so. Um, So I hope that keeps going and people keep reaching out to me because that makes me really happy to do that. That's that's dope. Having worked in the industry for a while, I know how much relationships and the way people see you, the way you interact with just everyone plays a huge role on people really wanting to be around you that's nice i hope that people feel that way (laughs) i I try like it's you know people are um a lot of 
thing one thing that I don't or have never agreed with is that saying of like um don't care about what anyone thinks of you. Mm-hmm. I I mean to a certain extent, but I've always thought the opposite. Like I really really care what people think of me because I work really hard to treat others really really well and make a really good first impression and I want them to think very highly of me. Right. So I think that interaction you see that I have with not only my guests, but my staff, I try to have a real even playing field. Like, hey, this is me, my authentic self. Like, I want to interact with you. I want you to feel good. I want you to enjoy yourself here. Like, just as best I can, because I really do care how people think of me. And I try to let young people know that, too, as you can go through a lot of situations in life and in business and in your work relationships, your home relationships, where it's really easy to say, well, I don't care what they think. Yeah. And like move on to the next. But you're going to keep coming up to similar situations. And then unless you grow from it or change your own behavior and your actions, you're never going to have a positive outcome. So I really I like to push. Hey, I hope that you like me. I hope that you have a really good interaction with me because I work really hard at that, too. Yeah, it's a skill. Like working in that industry, being hmm. able to talk to people from all different walks of yeah. life. Right. And it's a bar. Like you're yeah. going to just let loose, relax, have a couple of drinks, like enjoy yourself. Yeah. And then when you got to kick someone out, you got to do it like nicely. Well, I <laughs> always try to do it nicely. Actually, um, we I asked my very first person guest, just I didn't even ask him to leave. I just was like, ah, I can't serve you anymore. Like he wasn't over. He wasn't overserved, but I didn't want him to get to that point. Correct. So, and I used it as an example. I was like, hey, this guy, actually, he came from a neighboring um, establishment and he just had too much to drink, in my opinion. So I was like, hey, like, let him hang out, serve him water. We have uh, non alcoholic beverages for a reason, right? But we yeah. want him to feel comfortable here. And when you explain it to someone like that, just say, hey, well, I'm sorry, honey. Like, I would love you to come back and enjoy us again i just can't serve you right now and actually i gave him like a little handwritten note that said your next drinks on me your next visit (laughs) so that he can come back (laughs) so he can come back yeah um but that that was that was fun he was really sweet and he kept like saying are you sure i'm like yes it's okay but then he hung out and he met two of my friends and they all had a good time and he was fine after a few minutes it was okay yeah and having worked security myself for years in the industry if your approach is on point, people won't take it to another level. Right, exactly. You aren't like calling them out, calling out in a bad way or like saying, ah, eh, you suck. No, you're just yeah, like, or hey. embarrassing them. Or embarrassing them. Yeah, that's the worst. That You never want to do that. But just like, hey, babe, I'd love for you to come back and enjoy yourself again sometime, but I can't serve you right now. Thank you. <laughs> you're great. And still talk. I think a lot of um, people in the industry, like all of a sudden, then they're like done. They're not a customer anymore. You know, they're like, oh, they're done. Like, I'm I can't not, make money from you. I can't you. make money off you. I'm not drinking. You're not drinking anything anymore. So um, we do the opposite if that happens. It's like, hey, well, one, you should be talking to them because you got to gauge them. You got to see if they're okay. And like, do they want a cab? Do they need an Uber? Like, I've bought someone an Uber before. He wasn't even drunk. He just lived out of town, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> he was staying in a hotel and it was Cinco de Mayo. Uh, and all of these are our first, right? Because right. this is our first Cinco de Mayo. It'll be our first DJ event. Everything here right now is our first time doing it. So Cinco de Mayo, of course, they wanted everything to be on point. I'm like, we have to have all of our things stocked. We have to have all of our specialty drinks ready. We have to have all of our specials going. And this gentleman was having so much fun. He worked out of town and he was all by himself at the bar and he was there for a while. And he would just sit in and we like to make sure everyone starts conversations with them. Like I'll introduce that guy to Corey. I'll be like, Hey, look, that's my friend, Corey. You guys should talk about something. He's pretty cool. And you've seen us do that before. Like kind of grab groups and bring them together. And he was having so much fun that he was like, Oh man, I got to work. He was actually in town um, because he had a new job. So he was staying in a hotel. He was here for two weeks training. And he's like, Oh my gosh, I didn't realize it's so late. I have to get home. He called, we called him, a cab and then the cab told the company said oh we'll be there in a half hour they came super quick they came like five minutes later and he wasn't ready he was like oh my gosh i still have half a beer so the cab left and he didn't like 
really know. He was like, oh, I think they're going to come back. Right. No, the cab <laughs> did, not, <Peace. laughs> did not come back. So I was a little upset. I was like, I called the cab company. And they're like, oh, no, we're not sending anyone back. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll call them an Uber. I don't care. So we instead just paid for the Uber back to the hotel. He had a great time. And, you know, like that's part of it. You, they're still a customer, whether they're drinking or spending money, they're here, they're, they're your responsibility, one, their safety, but also like their, just their well-being overall, like how, how they are interacting with you in that time too. Yeah. And you're, and you're providing an experience. Yeah. Like it's really easy to ruin somebody's experience at your establishment. Yeah. You don't want to do that. And the fact that you're okay. Like, Hey, talk to so-and-so. Yeah. Here's some water. Yeah. Like, hang out, have a good time. Like, you're not making it, you're not adding any extra stress to your environment. Mm -mm. Everybody's super laid back. And I felt that when I was there. I was like, oh, this is, everybody just loves everybody. <laughs> I was like, I like this. This is this, this is a spot yeah. we could chill at. Right? <laughs> yeah. For sure. I was like, oh, good. And so the you, staff was excited about that, too. They were? The staff loves it. Yeah. They're just like, everyone feels great. They hear that a lot, too, from the customers. And I think that makes them do their job so much better than they thought they were going to like they're just like yeah like they go above and beyond one day the girls were like we're at a cilantro i'll get it it's okay i'm like no no no. you don't have to go and get things like i'll get it <laughs> this is my job but they're like no like they just go above and beyond because of the feedback they get and it's because of the environment they're creating and i try to tell them out all the time like this is you guys you are making the magic happen right now like people love being here with you and spending time with you so yeah. like, give yourself some credit too you know staff sure. creates the vibe yeah absolutely they're great so like you were just saying you just recently opened your own bar yes so what gave you the idea to want to open up your own bar you've been a boss for a while you've yeah been a managers for a long time super long time so i actually started working when i was 15 i worked for i was a lifeguard and oh, I, okay. yeah, it was for the, like the city but, um, that I live in, in Elgin and super summer, do you know, job, part-time lifeguard. And I liked it. So I actually kept that job through high school and I learned how to teach, uh, like swim lessons and coach swim teams and things like that. And I think that gave me a lot of skill at a young age. Mm. So then I went on to, um, a country club where I managed the, entire outside so the pool the pool staff the lifeguards the cabana the any activities that we had planned there was like a kids club friday night that we like did a babysitting program there was oh, wow. yeah i actually helped facilitate that with my um, old boss so that was awesome we did you know whatever was outside i managed and that was at 19. at 19. yeah so i've been um kind of like in a role of management and teaching and training since a very young age. And I really enjoy it. So I continued to kind of go on that path. I stayed at the country club for a while. What did I do after that? Uh, I had a few other jobs. I always had like a, at least two, three, sometimes four jobs at a time. And one of them was always like my main job, my management job, where, you know, it's kind of like my bread and butter, paid my bills, but all my other jobs were for fun. And by ch <laughs> by chance, a friend of a friend reached out to me and she said, hey, would you like to uh, bartend for a friend that works at Martini Room, which is a bar in Elgin where we live? And I had been a server. No, I had been a host at like a restaurant at that time. So I said, oh, uh, sure. <laughs> I don't know. I've never done that before. <laughs> what do you want me to do? And it wasn't bartending. She's like, oh, it's fine. It's just a cocktail waitress. Like, all you're going to do is, you know, take orders and give them. You don't even have to make the drinks. And I was okay. 20, 21. So I was like, OK, sure. Fine. Whatever. Let's do it. And then her friend got to go on her vacation and I filled in all her shifts. I loved it. It was so much fun. Nice. Yeah. They had a really cool vibe. Um, Corey, have you been to Martini Room before? I don't think I've been. Oh, it's really swanky. It's cool. And the owner, like on the spot, after the three days that I was covering, she offered me a job. She was like, hey, you're great. Do you want to do you want to work here like regularly? And I said, yes. I was like, yeah, sure. I loved it after that. Like the environment, like creating that fun place for people to enjoy themselves yeah. and like kind of curating that. 
you know, being the person to do that yeah. made me really excited. So it's like, heck yeah. And then she taught me how to bartend. So I had my job in management and doing all the things. And I was also bartending on the side. And I realized I really like this. Like, yeah. I really like this atmosphere, like fast paced, but it's always something different. So um, I, I kind of had my heart set on like, yeah, I can do this. Like, this is what I would like to do. So from then on, once I had that in my mind, I took any and every job I could that had to do with the industry because I. It's fun. It's fun. It's, it's a lot it's, of fun. It's really fun. And I, um, I did go to college, but I, uh, I went to college for a year and a half and actually dropped out. I just randomly never went back. <laughs> just wasn't for you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't think it's like the third time I've probably ever said it out loud. I don't even know if my parents fully know that yet. But <laughs> breaking news, <laughs> exclusive. I like you know really good grade grades in school and did all the things in high school. I was super excited. I moved out when I was nineteen. Had my good job when I was nineteen. Worked really 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 hard, and then I went to college, and it was community college because I couldn't afford it anywhere else. And my parents middle, like they provided for me the most amazing way they could, but we just weren't that, we couldn't do the four year thing. So, um, yeah, I went and I not just it, nothing met my expectation. That was wow. the classes I went to. And I had a teacher once tell me like, I'm just here for the paycheck. Literally. Oh. I'm like super excited. Right. Like that overachiever, like I'm in class. I have yeah. all my books and I'm ready to go. And here you are standing there like, yeah, you don't even need to use your book. By the way, that costs four hundred dollars. And I still don't understand why. <laughs> oh, right. my gosh. So, yeah, uh, that was kind of it for me. I literally didn't even do the right thing by like dropping out the right way. I just did not go back. You just I never showed back up. Just never showed back up. It was horrible. I was young, dumb, didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I, was, I was a little embarrassed. I was like felt like kind of like a failure because certain people in my family were like all about going to college yeah. and like making sure you go and the whole four-year thing so it's like oh my god why do anyway so going back to all of those odd jobs that i took mm -hmm. it was because i didn't know how to break it to most of my friends and family that i dropped out of college and wasn't planning on going back and didn't have the money to like enroll in like a restaurant management program or anything so i worked as a host I worked as a server. I was a horrible server. Really? Oh my god! My sister makes fun of me all the time because she's a, she was also in the industry. I kind of got her a job with me wherever I went, right? Mm. And she's the bomb. Like she can hold all the plates and all the trays and all the cups. And I <laughs> drop an empty plate on my foot, you know, oh. <laughs> like not even a full tray. There's, oh man! Um, so I had to learn through that. But I was a host, a server. I bartended. I helped um, a few other places open their business. I was a bar manager before I started um, helping um, other people open their bars. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I worked out in the city. I worked uh, in my hometown again, helping people with their startups. You know, I trained the staff. I would bring on, you know, do all the onboarding. So training, staffing, what would the menu look like? How should this be set up? Like, what's the best um way so that we have fast service i'm not great with food i'm a horrible cook <laughs> it's so bad like i burn soup sometimes Ouch. i know it's so bad <laughs> um but i still like did everything i could i i partnered with a lot of people along the way okay uh to learn things so if i i can manage a kitchen i know how i know the logistics and like the list and the inventory and the cleaning process is like I have all my certifications. I've just myself am a horrible cook. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's I took all of that knowledge. I took all of my skills and continuously applied them. I failed a lot along the way. That's how you learn. Yeah. Not every single project I had ended up great. Some of it ended up really awful, but I just kept going. I think that's the big difference. I once I decided that that's what I wanted to do, I just kept going even when it was would have been really easy to stop yeah especially in an industry like that where female bosses don't always have the easiest no. road no they don't not at all it's so i'm sure you have you have your fair share of not so fun times yeah no, any roadblocks yeah i shared a few just in passing with Corey that i'll elaborate on now 
when opening the the bar itself the first part of the project i had a handle on right so like mm. uh, the presentation to the city council or our business plan writing up uh you know what the menu would look like and everything that i already knew how to do was fine it was perfect i'm like yeah i got this i've done it already like eight times <laughs> but the new process is in a primarily male driven environment was really hard um dealing with the contractors me and my sister demoed most of the space so when you go in and Corey's been there a lot so <laughs> not a lot but he's been I mean, there a lot he's been there he, he, you're telling on me he, he goes and hangs out <laughs> um so it was the building itself was office space it was a law office so there's like easily eight little mini offices and me and my sister and some friends would grab a bottle of wine, a sledgehammer, and you know Demo time. <laughs> whatever Demo. else we needed. Knocked down all the walls. And then we decided, okay, you know, we need someone to put the walls back up. And I don't know how to do that. So we hired a contractor. I did a few interviews. And even the interviews were painful. Really? Like, yeah. So I, one, didn't know where to look. I put it out on Facebook. Like, hey, looking for a contractor. Right. And I got a few people. Some of them were nice, right? But even when they were nice, they really like were waiting for like the boss to come into the room, like during the interview. Oh, they looked at you and they were like, mm, "Oh yeah, where's the boss?" Oh right. no, for real. I'd be like talking. He'd ask me questions. He was like, "So," and then I feel like on a few occasions they would ask me like purposely like really hard questions that like didn't even have anything to do with our conversation to like trip me up. <laughs> and I'm like, I just. I wanted to tell you like how I want it to look in my time frame. We aren't even like you're not even doing the job yet. And he's asking he was like asking me like, well, what do you think about this, 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 this and things that I had obviously never heard of. Right. But I'm like, why? What? This is I just want to know if you can get it done in time. And oh, my gosh, maybe it's stuff I don't know, you know. Right. But I found a contractor. It was great. But even then, sometimes, you know, it, like bypass me to ask um someone else so the way that i continued with this process was i took out a loan yeah and it's from a very good friend and he was the one who came to me after one of my projects kind of i had to bow out of a project that i was in we opened a ta uh we opened a bar and it just wasn't a, a flourishing environment yeah. for me to be in any longer so i kind of bowed out i was like hey i did my time here you can handle it from there keep going whatever and he reached out him and a few other people reached out and said hey like don't stop what do you need and i said well what does this look like took out a loan talked about all the ideas started knocking down walls so blessing in disguise right, right. but because andrew his name is andrew and he's my great friend shout out andrew shout out andrew he's amazing <laughs> <laughs> and he not only has done this for me but like he really builds his community as well. I think that's something we have in common and why I was willing to partner with him in a way because he runs his business the same way I run the tavern. He wants to see other people around him succeed. Yeah. So teamwork makes a dream work. For sure. For sure. He's great. Um, but yeah, it was like they would bypass me and like call, try to call Andrew. And I'm like, but Andrew's not the one paying back the loan. Like <laughs> I'm the one paying for this. Why would you call and ask somebody else? Or we would walk through with like certain uh, city, not city officials. We were like inspectors. No, oh, the inspector thing. We'll get to that. That's oh, crazy. <laughs> all right, the story. Um, <laughs> uh, just people that you know when they want to know what's going on, and they say, "Oh, come show me the space and do a walk through." Like excited to see something new coming mm. downtown. Well they would walk right past me and go to Andrew and shake his hand. <laughs> like, and he'd be like, oh, well, actually, Jamie's the owner. She's right here, you know, and he'd redirect them, right. which was great. Right, for sure. um, yeah. But also very awkward for everybody in the room. And it happened like every single time. Well, at least a little eye opening for them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so that was kind of like the first few things dealing with the contractors, dealing with that. Um just like uh, hoping not to be taken advantage of, which I feel like 
not everyone else has to go through. I feel like if you're maybe a gentleman, you don't have to always feel like someone might be pulling the rug over you. Or right. how do you say that? A rug out from under you? <laughs> yeah, pulling the rug out from under you. Yeah. So like, so you felt in the industry being the owner that at times you feel like you're getting taken advantage of or somebody's trying to test that? Yeah, definitely. And Or just like come up with situations because I am a woman. That doesn't make any sense. And it's hard to put like certain examples out there. Just, you know, okay, here's an example. We had to have one of the electrical inspectors come in after the electricians did part of their job to like go through everything and the ceiling. I knew he was going to be down there that day. I had the day off of my regular, my full-time day job. So... I was like, yeah, I'm going to come down and see, make sure everything's good. Plus, if we don't pass this part of the inspection, I'm going to have to know what needs to be done so that we do pass it, right? That's yeah. pretty common sense. Yeah. So I'm standing there and I'm waiting for him to do his thing. I'm like cleaning off some of the um, bar top and dusting down some things. And I think also the Coca-Cola guy was supposed to come that day. So I'm like waiting for him. And this guy, and he's all mad, the inspector. He comes back and he's like, all oh, mad. I guess we didn't pass the, something we were supposed to have done. And I asked him, oh, my gosh. Hi. OK. I'm so sorry. What is it that I need done? I'll write it down. Or is there a list or is there something you can direct me to to make sure that it's finished? And he goes, no, I don't need to tell you. O- OK. And he's like, it doesn't concern you. And it wouldn't make a difference if I told you anyway. Ouch. Yeah, like, I think he even, I'm saying it nicely, and let's put it that way. And I was, like, lost for words because I was, I just didn't know what to say at that point. And I was like, excuse me, I do need to know. I have to make sure that it's passed. What does that look like? Do I need to pass this on to the electrician? Do I need to pass this on to the city? Do I need to go buy something? Like, what do I need to do? And why are you so upset right now? Obviously, there's an issue. And yeah, he wouldn't tell me even after that. Wow. He literally did not tell me and left. What? Yeah, he's like, I'll call the electrician myself. Wow. Yeah. That's super rude. Yeah. So um, that is an example, I guess. Yeah, something that a gentleman probably doesn't go through, like you said. Right. Um, My contractor straight out told me I made a comment one time that I didn't know. I said like the words, I don't know, or I'm not sure. And it was talking about a specific part of the project. And he stopped me and he said, Jamie, I care about you. And I'm not going to take advantage of you, but I don't want you to ever repeat that to any of the other contractors you work with. And I said, what? What do you mean? He's like, no, they're going to take advantage of you if you say something like that. Or if you continue to say something like that, don't say it. I don't care if you don't know it. Call me instead. Oh, then leaving yourself vulnerable. Yeah. No, he, he said straight up, he's like, it's different for you being a woman. It's it's just don't say that. Don't say those words. Don't say I don't know or I'm not sure. It was probably something like how do you how many lights do you want over here? And like, do you know how many voltage? You know, stuff that I obviously have never done yeah. before. Correct. It was all a learning process. And for me to say, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. He just straight up was like, pulled me in the other room. He's like, don't, don't say ever that. say that again. Yeah. Seriously. The teaching moment. And it I is. I was like, damn. <laughs> I'm being honest. I don't know. So uh, I learned through this project to partner with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. My architect was amazing. And that's something I never knew how to do either. I'm like, how do you hire an architect? I don't know. <laughs> I know you can hire an architect. <laughs> you need to for city planning. Okay. Um, you have to have, if there's any sort of uh, build out or building building up or changes in a commercial space, you have to have it drawn out and laid out by someone who has a state license, which would be an architect. Oh, wow. Yeah. And you have to submit that. They just basically, any work that's being done, I'll think about liabilities. Any work that's ever being done whatever company is doing it, it all has to be like double checked. So let's say like I put a wall up and it catches on fire in two years. They're going to say, oh, well, obviously I'm going to get in trouble because my insurance is going to have a shit show. But they're going to say, well, who built that wall? Like Norman and Corey. (laughs) 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 
<laughs> so, um, you know, he my architect though was great. He was fantastic. He was probably the only besides my general contractor. He was the only one who specifically took the time to say, okay, hold on. What aren't you understanding right now? And what can I help you with? Oh, that's dope. Yeah. And I tell him it all the time. I even left a Google review. I was like, he's amazing. That's when it's really good when you actually <laughs> leave a Google review. Right. right. I did. Yeah, I did. For sure. Yeah. Corey, uh, there was one time, this is after, so there's a lot of inspecting that goes on. They inspect all the things, right? So towards the end though, once you're done with the build out and everything's up and you're ready to go, the uh, general inspectors from the city come. And basically all they are there to do is double check it, make sure it meets all the requirements and give you the thumbs up, like stamp the paper, right? The plumber did not pass me the first one, which is pretty common. A lot of people or places won't pass your first inspection because there's it's a new space. You never know hmm. what might need to be changed in that space. It's not like any other space, you know. Right. So I was freaking out because I was like, oh, my gosh, I I failed. I didn't pass any of my inspection. And I was like a hot mess that day. Um, and then I reached out to my landlord, who uh, who's also my good friend. And he's like, no, it's okay. You actually did really well. There's like hardly anything on this list that you have to fix. So that's a good thing. But yeah. when I told him what happened with the plumber, we like were just so confused. The ADA compliance mean, you know, handicap accessible. Yeah. The toilets have to be a certain height. And there's really no way to prove that unless measuring it. Like mm. literally just tape take the little tape measure or you can have like the printout of where you bought it from the manufacturer right. and then you have to make sure you have hot water which because we were still under like a lot of construction we had not turned the hot water on but all you had to do was look under the sink so the inspector came through and failed me for not having the hot water on okay fine i was like all right cool yeah that was my that was my fault right. should have known that but he also failed me for the Toilet is not being the right height. And I told him, but they are. Th you know, what do you need for me to to prove it? And he's like, well, I don't know, but they're not. I, I don't know if they are. I was like, I can go get a ruler or uh, I can go get a measuring tape. They are. They're supposed to be 17 point something something inches. And I know that they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> he, he, nope, failed me. No. Like the quickest inspection I ever came in. Boop, boop, boop. No, no. Okay, cool. Bye. So I called Alicia, who is also my most wonderful friend. She's my property manager. I've known her for a long time now. And she said, okay, I'm going to have my plumber come and do the inspection with you next time. And I said, why? Did I do something wrong? Oh, my gosh. Like, this is suck so sucky. I was like, what am I doing? Like, I was just, again, a hot mess. So stressful during that time. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm just going to have him come do it. It's fine. So we rescheduled it. It was like two days later. The owner of the plumbing company came. His name is Tom. He's also fantastic. Fantastic. And <laughs> <laughs> so he came. All he did was stand there. Literally, all he did was stand there. The same inspector came back. No way. Swear. He was like, hey, how you doing? Good. Cool. They like shut the shit for like, you know, a few minutes. He did a walkthrough. He went and looked at the toilets. By the way, I had spent two days calling the manufacturer and having them send me spec sheets of exactly what toilets they were. Had Just them to in, show this guy. Had them in a file, like with the printout, that model, that model number, exactly every single measurement that was on there. Right. He didn't even ask for it. He just was like, oh, he he looked at Tom. Are these uh, ADA? He's like, yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> wow. And then, and then, uh, so by the end of that, Tom had to take a phone call and he comes back. At, um, we're at the front end of the bar and he's like, Oh, well, yeah, you passed. So great. He's like, Oh, this is awesome. You know, are you going to have, I forgot, I think it was Heineken. He's like, You're going to have Heineken here? And I was like, Yeah, probably. It's a bar. <laughs> mm -hmm. So he's like, Oh, yeah, I'll be back then. Well, congrats. Do you want to take my number? Oh. I swear. <laughs> no, he didn't. Flirt with you after. I was like, yo, first you come in here and you fail my inspection. 
And all it takes is a man standing in the room to say, yes, those are ADA compliant. And you pass it. And then not only that, but you hit on me before you leave. I was like, so what the hell? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's what that's what I think is the biggest like you said, asked obstacle right. is learning to go through all of those situations when I wasn't very aware of them before. Yes, normal day things that women go through or girls go through, like, you know, that we're used to. We do that every day. But things like this and being a new business owner and trying to learn all of the things that I don't already know, but also having those obstacles made it pretty tough sometimes of course yeah and it was like double the work <laughs> for real for no reason unnecessary for no reason. Yeah. Right. it's crazy but but i'll be back for the heineken <laughs> <laughs> this guy i know he actually doesn't work at the, for the city anymore i found that out but it unrelated of that oh. totally and i think he was retiring i don't know something who knows but <laughs> <laughs> Dude, when she threw in the last part where he asked her, I was like, get out. Right, I wrote right. it on the back of the little um, no. thing that he gave me and everything. Like, you know, they gave you a piece of paper. They they put the sticker on it. And then I was like, OK, turn it. I turn over. And I was like, OK, what's your number? Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of him. Just write it down. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, he was. It sucks because. He was nice. He was probably like super fun. I just feel like, you know, he probably didn't even realize how he was acting and what that situation looked like of to course. me, you know, of course. but right. a man, just a man being in his presence and giving him the OK meant that it was OK. But me saying the exact same thing, like I even had measuring tape in hand. Look, it's they are. Right. Nope. Mm -mm. Wow. Well. Just a power trip. No. For sure. <laughs> oh. Well, 48 hours changes everything, right? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So that's that. But we passed everything. And obviously now we're up and running. And it's going good. Yeah. Yeah. And you opened. That was pretty cool. You surprised your, your pops with opening on his birthday. We did. We, my sister and I were trying to come up with a fun date or a memorable date to open. And. Uh, we decided to do it on my dad's birthday. The bar itself is named after my grandfather. Vern. Vern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw a picture of the actual signature. Is actually the logo. Yeah. I thought that was so cool. That yeah. is. That's one hell of a tribute. We yeah. got that from notes that he used to write my grandmother. So that's a signature and the logo is the signature and it's super special to us. That is. It gave him goosebumps. It gave him goosebumps. Is awesome. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Good. Wow, that's pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I would, when we went, I was like, why Vern's? Mm -hmm. I wonder why Vern's. Right. <laughs> Again, now we he, we talk about Norman and I doing the ESPN where we, after games and stuff, we talk. He's doing it to me in the bar while we're there. Like, why, why, you know, why this? Why sure this? was. <laughs> you just ask him, like, how about we just get her on the show? Like, <laughs> like we, we can ask her whatever we want then, you know? And he's like, Okay, set that up. Oh, yeah, you're that. right. You're right. So <laughs> that, yeah, so she's the owner. Like, oh, oh, she's behind the bar working and helping while she's. I was like, and doing oh, dishes, doing dishes, <laughs> yeah. going back and forth, making sure touching tables. I was like, man, she's a pro. <laughs> yeah. And then I had questions and he couldn't answer. So yeah. I was like, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know. I can say I don't know because I don't know. <laughs> like I don't know. Let's just have her on the show. You can ask whatever you want. Yeah, no, I just thought it was cool, especially with you open up your own bar. You have a female staff for the most part mm -hmm. and no issues. Everybody's having a good time. Like, yeah. Like that the whole atmosphere was like, oh wait, this is a fun spot. Yeah. It's crazy how that happened too, because we didn't mean for it to be like a mostly female staff. It just happened that way. We did have two other male members of the staff that actually uh they decided not to work after like two weeks or one guy didn't even start and you know no hard feelings at all they're just like uh you know i've been in the restaurant industry it's not really my vibe anymore i wanted to they were like good friends or one of them was a really good friend mm. and 
he like was super excited. He's like, yeah, I want to, I want to. And then he did. And he's like, no, I know why I quit last time. He's like, I just don't want to like talk to people anymore. I'm like, Hey, I can't blame you there. So right, right. Uh, the guys that we had working ended up not working. And here we are the first week being open, just like busy and everyone excited. It was all girls. I remember just like almost in tears one night looking over and being like, dang, look at these girls, these amazing ladies just rocking it out. And I felt so proud. And then we have David and David is our mixologist. He's a good friend. We're all good friends. I feel like yeah. um, along the way, we've all met each other at a certain point in our lives. But, you know, he's right there along with everyone. And that's the girls. And yeah, no issues. Like everyone supports each other. And it's really awesome. And then we always say like, hey, ladies. Yes, look at us go. Especially when we're like pulling like a 10 hour shift. We're like, we got this. We got this. We're all the <laughs> all of our very... Uh, female feminine strength here <laughs> yeah you guys also have a spot down downstairs right so that's actually a separate business but yes oh. it's called the light lounge and i co-own that with two other women well female empowerment right absolutely yeah. absolutely yes. Yes, so that's a sec for me. That's a second business. Um, for my business partners, I th it's also like their second business. Uh, I work with Stephanie. She created a chair dance class. Chair dance. Chair dance class. <laughs> Actually, she calls it Own It. It's amazing, and she has an online platform, and it's all for women empowerment and how to truly love and accept and support how you feel in the body that you have right now yeah. without yeah. any second guessing it and just like honoring your body like not giving too much care about like what you eat you know she's just like you, eating stuff shouldn't be punishment yeah you should eat what makes you happy and you should feel great about your body and you should if you want to dance dance if you want to work out work out so it, it's amazing honestly and it's changed my life a thousand percent i can tell you that because i do the chair dance class with her um we record for her online membership so you can see us doing the dances like step by step if oh you, and then they do it from home yeah if you prefer to do it from home you can pay like a monthly membership and that's awesome like women from all over the world do it and we she even does uh live zooms for people that want to like be quote unquote in class but can't because they're in the uk of course. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in the country that helps <laughs> yeah uh she does live in-person classes at the studio which is down there and that's always fun we the reason she launched the online part was because of covid we took over that space right before we had to shut down our first month oh. open would have been march of last of year. last year and oh, wow. we had all these events lined up we were so ready we had like zumba classes and yoga classes and her okay. chair dance class we had all these things going and then we had to shut down <laughs> so she created the online the virtual platform because of that yeah mm -hmm. and then Lindsay is um my other business partner and she's like a life coach and mentor and a, like a business coach so okay. she has a totally online business and she actually um i was her first one-on-one -on -one client and she is probably one of the biggest reasons why i was able to like be pushed past my comfort zone to like open the bar and leave things that were holding me back behind right. so she has she meets with one-on-one -on -one clients she uses the space for um business workshops for people and women and anyone really who wants to come in and learn how to organize their business, how to, you know, just step up on yeah. you know, their social media platform, how to present themselves, how to kick really bad habits that keep you from performing well. So uh, she's absolutely amazing too. So it's the three of us at the light lounge and it just happens to be um, on the back end of Vern's. And then we use it for the tavern space too. So if we have an event, we'll use it down there too. That's really cool. Yeah. All in one building too. One building. Yeah. <laughs> All in the same building. Yeah. No, you could you could definitely feel the vibes. Like when they were walking around, like, oh yeah, we just had a class earlier. And I was like, Oh, what class? Like, what are they talking about? And Corey was filling me in. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. And I was like, Own it? Oh the hell yeah. Own it. <laughs> yes. Even today, um my, I think the only time I really ever annoy the staff is when I, I like to do those little voice messages on like Facebook. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's <laughs> like 20 minutes later, a voice messages. I'm like, hey, guys, I just want to make sure everyone knows, like, hang out with everybody, not just our regulars. Like, <laughs> I'm like constantly coaching and reminding people like, hey, like these are better habits that we can create or, you know, like I believe that if I I can have someone just as strong as me in any field then that's just going to benefit myself. And I think that's honestly what a lot of people get backwards in right. our industry because a lot of people are like, nobody needs, nobody should know how to make these drinks or they have the same specials that we do or yeah. we have to one-up them because they're across the street. Like, I don't believe in that at all. I actually just met the guy who invented Not Your Father's Root Beer. Like oh, the, yeah. Uh, he's super cool. His name is, I think it's Tim. Oh my gosh, I can't remember, but I think it's Tim. I oh. uh, just met him and he's fantastic. And he just started his own distillery again right before COVID. Yeah. But they're back up and running and doing everything. And we're going to partner with him with some of his spirits and some of his uh, uh, different flavored creams, which are amazing. Mm. I can't wait. We have some of them in the bar already, but he is so fun. And we were doing a tasting and he has this really great patio area outside mm. that he has he's going to open and has like picnic tables and this this and that and i shared an idea with him that we're going to do at the tavern when our uh, beer garden is open oh you guys have a beer garden we will yeah oh. we're starting on it this week Ooh, look at that. <laughs> um but i shared you know the space that's on the the side of the building Corey. Oh. so we're gonna have like a super kitschy like beer garden with mismatched furniture and like flowers and you know it's kind of just like really boho chic like maybe hillbilly-ish i don't know but uh <laughs> Love the description. or another place to drink <laughs> <laughs> or another place to drink that qualifies that that's that's good enough with some lights um but i had an idea that we're gonna do out there which i think is really fun and i told him about it and he's like that's great where'd you come up with this it's like well i came up with it we're gonna do it at the tavern and he looked at me why would you tell me that and I was like, well, because you could do it here and make good money off it. And he's like, really? And I said, yes, I will give you all the things. You should do this. You are 30 minutes away from me. I'm not going to, your customers are not my customers. I was like, it, it, if you do this here, nobody's going to know that I do it there. Like, you should do this. So actually, um, we're going to set up another sit down tasting and I'm going to bring like the bucket the idea that I have, I'm going to bring it to him so he can see. And I'm going to have it priced out and everything. Be like, you need to do this because your clients will love it. And you have the fire pits outside. It'd be great. See, I can see exactly why. Oh, wow. Yes. People love working with you. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a whole different approach to it. It's not a competition thing. It's a, hey, I want to see you succeed just yeah. as much as I want to succeed. Correct. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. too many people have that. Oh, I know. But I that makes me happy. It's not even like a pride thing. It's not even like a, oh, I got to tell someone I... I had this idea like I really, really it just makes me happy to see someone else doing a good job at something or having them succeed in something they thought they couldn't or like taking an idea to the next level that, that make that makes me happy personally. Right. Yeah, you don't get to see that a lot in the industry, like the brainstorming between different different mm -hmm. spots, which is I think it's smart, like you can help each other create just like the best atmospheres at different spots. Absolutely. Yeah. I like Absolutely. Because okay. it's cool being at one spot and then one person says, oh, you should try this spot down the road if you're going that way. Mm -hmm. That's way better than, oh, yeah, we're the only spot in town. Of course. Yeah, no. Of course. <laughs> no. I, and everywhere is different. Not, it doesn't matter if you have the most loyal, regular, or customer in the bar scene, right? They still have other places they like to go. Right? Yeah. So why not support that place too? Like, hey, yeah, if you're going to get a beer there, Come here after. <laughs> no. Ooh. I, Corey, did I tell you that I'm getting a haircut tomorrow? No. No, Tuesday. 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 Um, okay, so there's a barbershop, and this is another idea, just like togetherness. I don't know what to call it. But togetherness. I like that <laughs> Togetherness. One. Um, there's uh, uh, Will, who I went to high school with, actually. He moved his barbershop on, on the same street as ours. Okay. He had a in a certain location and they just moved and they did their grand opening and they're so cute and i love them so i thought of an idea and david what my mixologist is going to help me with it like come up with the flyers and like print them out nicely and all that but i'm gonna have one of the girls that takes all the photos and the videos do like a little okay. mini photo shoot slash video 
of like me at the bar and then walking down to the barber shop and then sitting in Will's chair and then Will's going to give me an undercut with like a cool design under here where like where my piercings are so you yeah. can see it all cool and and then we're going to do that have like a little video and have him with his clippers and have his logo and all that stuff and we're going to share a promotional flyer that's called get faded and oh, so if it, <laughs> yeah dope. so if someone from the barber shop comes in with the receipt and the flyer then they get a discount on their drinks and if the any of the bartenders like end up talking to a customer about either their business or you know haircuts or something they'll be like hey we'll take this and go get a haircut there because then next time you come back you get a discount yeah so oh, things wow. like that are like yes. see that makes me happy. You are next like level. I'm yeah, so yeah, excited yeah. about yeah. it right now because I'm a little scared because I've never had the undercut done. I'm like, how much is he gonna and do? He put graphics in it too. Uh, he 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 um maybe he looked oh. at it the other day. He like measured me. He was like, oh, oh, oh okay, I got you. And I'm like, okay, uh, just do whatever you want, but <laughs> don't take like half my head. <laughs> wow. Um, so we're excited. That's on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. That's next level. She's yeah, thinking about sure. collabs and stuff with yes. neighbors. <clears throat> that's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So that's a, an example of like when I say like an, an idea that benefits someone else, like that just makes me excited. Right. I love it. Yeah. And two different si types of clientele. Mm -hmm. And downtown Elgin is getting really nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting so nice. We got it. <laughs> Did he, he, uh, they shot a Christmas movie down there. By you guys? Yeah. I heard about that. On the, what was Which that one? on Friday? Friday. Mm -hmm. Oh, it just happened? Yeah. Yeah. Friday. They just I got the text Friday morning from Vicky. Yes. And I go, if you had it told me yesterday, <laughs> I'm all in because I get my haircut on Saturday. I'm like, no, I need a haircut. Mm. I can't. I <laughs> so, yeah. No, I didn't make it because of that. Yep, they it's uh, like a Hallmark Christmas type movie. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So they had the street decorated, and I had actually ran into I think two of the producers or someone on the film crew randomly while I was walking the other day, and they were passing out flyers like a notice of filming, and I they looked really super confused, which is why I was talking to them like, "Hey, do you guys need help finding anything?" And they're like, we're just making sure we didn't miss any of the businesses. Mm. And I said, well, what are you passing out? And they said, a, no a notice of filming. And I was like, well, did you get the bar at the very end? <laughs> and I was like, did you get the bar at the very end? They're not open. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, they're not. And I said, well, I work there. I can take it to them. That's fine. So I took the flyer. And then I texted the staff. I'm like, look, they're shooting a movie. Hopefully right in front of us. And it was. It's kind of more down by the barber shop, But... They had the whole street decorated the next uh, two days. And so then I brought all my Christmas decorations to the no. bar and made them. No <laughs> I way. did. That's I did. Genius. So I brought all my Christmas decorations down to the bar and had the staff set it up and decorate the windows. It's so funny. Um, I don't know if we'll make the cut at all, but the, the film crew did come by and they were like, did she do this just for us? Who was that? And they were like, that was the owner. And um, they were like, no way. So actually Crystal called me and was like, they just asked if we could, if they could use our uh, front window in the movie. No. And I was like, yes, yes. Too bad. I don't have like any good, I don't have signage yet, but all I have is like this little tiny thing that says burns Words. right now. <laughs> But yeah, so that was kind of cool. That that's, happened. That's so, cool. Elgin's right. on the up and up, I guess. On the up For and sure. up. I can't believe you decorated. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, that's... <laughs> I put my Christmas tree in there and everything. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. See, a lot of people wouldn't think that. No. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't go that extra that extra mile. Yeah, it was fun. And the staff had fun. They got to decorate. We were kind of. It made it fun too. They had the roads blocked off on that Friday, which were normally oh, really busy on Friday. Right. So it was kind of slow because mm -hmm. everyone thought we, everyone thought like all they the businesses were closed. Were closed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they had fun. Like they got to take pictures and like, you know, Snapchat people like, oh, come down. It's Christmas in here. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we had a good time anyway. So, but that, that was fun. All right. Mm -hmm. So, what's been the hardest part of owning your own bar so far? Um, hardest part, I'd say time management and mm. 
you know, you want to spend like it. every single second there just to make sure that it's going. I mean, it, you always want to make sure that it's getting better and, and doing more. Right. Yeah. But it's really hard to remember to take that step back and take a break. Honestly, breathe a little bit. Yeah, breathe. Um, that I think is my what I need still having to have work on that. Uh, I work a full time job. I'm in management. <laughs> I work a super corporate job. I work at Lazy Boy Corporate at the flagship store in Schaumburg, and I'm a sales manager there. On top of owning your own bar. Yes. Wow. So I help to run the the staff at that store. We're also the training location for the entire company. So like we just got done training two people from Seattle market, which means they came up here because they learn from us and then they go back to their stores. We just actually took over all their franchises as a company. So that's what I mean by like time management. Right. I need to f still figure out like, hey, it's OK to take a break on this day or this day that day. And I have a lot of trust for my staff. I really do. I know that they could open and close now by themselves, but like feeling like oh, I need to be there. I, I want them to know that I care about them. I don't want them to have to do it by themselves. You know, <laughs> like even right now on the back of my mind, I'm like, I hope Crystal's doing OK. She's by herself tonight. Normally oh, I'm there, you know, yeah. you gotta <laughs> no, be doing good, Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does a fantastic job. But yeah, but that's your baby. At the yeah, end of the day. right. Exactly. So it doesn't hurt to pop in, have a <laughs> right. drink at the what end of the bar. Right. What you doing? <laughs> that's of course then he's like i'd be the guy i'd be the owner who sits at the end of the bar and just has a drink <laughs> yes. doesn't let anybody bother me uh, <laughs> i try i don't no i can't do that because everyone ends up coming up and trying to buy me shots <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing but you also, work there though like you actually I, do stuff yes part of my plan is i didn't want to do anything i <laughs> wanted if i was to do what you do uh -huh. my vision is completely <laughs> different oh. i want no one to know that i own it Same. and i don't want to do anything except be the customer it comes in, sits at the end of the oh, bar. Yeah. That's it. And he's like, that's crazy. I'm like, if I want to own it, that's how I want to yeah. run. You know, like, I don't want to touch anything because I don't know how to run a bar. So I don't want to That's how anything. I feel about a kitchen <laughs> like, <laughs> right. with the food. Right. Uh, we have, um, we have, we call them shareable plates or small plates because, you know, they're like flatbreads, like literally very easy prep. And, and they're great. Small, yeah, they are very good. Yes. My sister made all those recipes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Your sister made My all the recipes did. for the flatbread? She did. Yes. And they're fantastic. And the dips, the dips that we have. I didn't yes. get to taste any last time oh. I went. Oh, they're so good. Yes. Corey they, just kept on telling me about it <laughs> they, while I drooled. <laughs> <laughs> they sell out. So we were still like, I keep telling the staff too, because sometimes we run out of things. And I'm like, it's, I'm happy that we're running out of things because honestly, like our ordering has been up. Like I'm ordering more than when we open. And if we're still at the point where we're running out of things, yay. You know, I'm like, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, we run out of the dip a lot because people order that like crazy. And um, shareable plates, those are all things that even if I was back there, actually, I'm back there a lot. Normally, when you guys are there, I'm normally yeah. the one in the back because I, I make the girls stay on the bar so they can talk to more customers and sling okay. more drinks and like be more active with like the actual clientele. So if we have a lot of orders coming in, I'll go and make the flatbreads and the dips and prep and like make more so they can be with the customer. Um, if not, if we don't have any orders coming in, I'm normally doing dishes. Right. I, <laughs> um, I am definitely, uh, we have a name, I won't say it on here. We can edit it. <laughs> okay. I, I just, I, we were like, hey, I'm just like, I'm your dish bitch, you know, like, they're like dish bitch come here <laughs> but um yeah i'm normally doing all i, I do the dishes same thing because i'd rather be the one doing dishes so that you can go mingle with the customers you know as the staff yeah like you don't i if i'm here i'll do dishes you go hang out with somebody or sell more cocktails or take a shot with somebody well don't take too many shots with somebody <laughs> <laughs> but you don't mind the grind at all yeah no like you love it yes uh, even uncomfortable it. in the kitchen when yeah you have to. when i don't like it yeah i mean i don't not like it just what what is, what we have now i know and i know how to do it so i'm fine but if you we start adding anything else i don't know i'll have to have someone teach me you right. know right for yeah sure. mm -hmm. that's awesome that is <laughs> and you do it all with a smile on your face which right. is different oh yeah 
Yeah. Well, Even when you're working, I noticed that uh, not too many bosses are like smiling. Some of them are like, stressed out or in the back or you were just um, always going to smile no matter what was going on. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, part of that, like when I was 21 in the middle of mar- martini room, like going light bulb off of my head. Oh, I love this. You know, like I really do. So it's easy to be in that space. If Now, if you ask me about my other job, sometimes, yeah, I'm in the back like, oh, my God, freaking out because, <laughs> you know, maybe retail sales isn't exactly my end all to be all. Uh, I love my job there, but that's probably where you will see me stress out over something because as much as I, I am positive there, too. A know, whole different environment. Yeah, whole different, yeah. telling someone their sofa is not coming in for six months is not exactly like a happy conversation, you know. So in that, you might see me stressed out because it's not exactly something I'm like, yeah, for. But um, at the bar, even, you know, like we talked about, even if it's, you know, asking somebody to head on their way out or to, hey, sorry, I can't serve you right now. Like those are all pretty negative things to happen to or kids. we've basically had everything break so far too so this is the other really? side the other side of owning a business is let's see even though the everything in the space is brand new our walk-in cooler has already gone out we had to have it fixed Ouch. and that was like just the biggest pain in the butt i don't know if you were there when the, <laughs> the guy was there fixing it oh my gosh so that happened already um the bathroom door and the men's everyone hates it <laughs> and why <laughs> it's, it's a pain the, it's the worst like, okay you so. open it and it stays open so per ada compliant regulations new as of literally last year i think the code says that if you're commercial space with a new build out or anything that you're adding new so if you're putting in those doors they have to be push like they have to have an automatic part of it so you can you can have both you can have like where you open it but it has to have like an automatic yeah, push button on it mm-hmm. so we put them in and the urinals are like the vintage 1920s urinals which are super cool they're all the way down to the floor yeah but when you press the button e- even if we took it down to like the lowest notch on the timer it just open and <laughs> Um, it's open for a long yeah, time. Yeah, it just opens. <laughs> Corey's just standing there looking back at it. Like, I was the first time I did. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> when is What's this going to close? Right <laughs> so I just turned around and wished it close. <laughs> yeah. So it's like coming off the hinges. I'm oh, I'm really? just going to have to have someone come in and pull the whole unit out and redo the doors. And so that's happening. Oh, our, not that it is the tavern's responsibility, but the roof on the building has a leak so it like dribbled <laughs> down into all some of the units and it, in the speakeasy where the chandeliers are yes you can't see it unless you look but one of those walls is totally effed up because it has water damage it has to totally be redone so you know but this is like like you said my baby something yeah. i love to do so even when that happens i'm like oh well at least now i know how to cl- call the plumber you oh, know lesson learned i know tom <laughs> Hey, Tom. Come on. Tom, Tom knows me. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, for being amazing. And now I need help <laughs> again, you know? So, right. learning experiences, all those things just come full circle. And I think that's why you see me smiling, is even though I it might be stressful, it's like a good type of stress. Much rather be your stress there than somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I was looking at the logo. Mm-hmm. And when Corey said Vern's Tavern, I was like, I wonder what what Vern is. Mm-hmm. So you know what Vern is. You named the spot. Yes. What does Vern stand for? Uh, Vern is my papa, or he's my grandfather. We just call him Papa. Papa. Yes. Um, Vern. My grandpa was like super important to the family. Mm-hmm. We're super close as a family, and really. He, growing up and when you got to a certain stage like you we know that papa like loved beer right like it was a thing he was fun he was hard working but it's kind of like one thing he was known for is like having a good time really creating a, a space he yeah. really created a space where people felt appreciated and like welcomed and we had like this little neighborhood bar that he would take 
his friends' kids too when when you turn twenty one and like they all the guys would get together and like go to the bar and uh I was always really excited for that atmosphere. Yeah. So, you know, when I turned twenty one, it was like part of that ritual. It's like Papa took us to the bar. Like this is it was called Club Fifty Eight. It's this little tiny bar and literally a block away from the house. And he had like certain rules to follow, you know, always tip your bartender, always push in your chair. And if they buy around, then you buy around. Oh, he's an yeah. OG. Yeah. Like, yes, yes. And as far as my grandpa goes, like his personality super hardworking he was a very broad big man so we called him a bear because he was on the exterior he was pretty hardcore like he was a foreman so he managed his team out in the field and he had to be kind of tough and then you know he provided for his family he, he lived he grew up on a farm of like a family of 11 you know so he was oh, like wow. tough around the edges and he showed that side but we also called him a teddy bear because he was a big softy on the inside and that you know that is kind of what he taught us to be very to be to be very hard working to be honest to be um really forthcoming with your intentions and how people perceive you but to also really take advantage of the time you have with people you can tell it was really important for him to provide for his family right. and to make sure people felt welcomed in his home. The, my grandma and grandpa's house was always open to anybody. Like oh, I even wow. lived there at one point when I, after I moved out when I was 19, oh. I moved back in, <laughs> but I moved back in with my grandparents and uh, a lot of the drinks, the cocktails are named after things that he used to say. So he's, what? Yeah. He's super Southern. He grew up in Southern Illinois. And then my, grandmother grew up up here so she was like a quote-unquote city girl for him and <laughs> he used to write love notes not i don't know love notes but he used to write notes to her letters when he was working far away and um like especially after they had the kids you know my parents and stuff like that or yeah. my dad uh my dad so his signature came from one of the letters that he wrote oh to, to yeah. your grandma yeah so i asked my grandma i was like hey do you have any no i know that you have the notes that um, Papa used to write, can we see them? And I'd like to use it for the logo. So she dug one out. We read through a bunch of them one night and that was pretty cool and took a picture of it. And my friend, Lindsay, she okay. actually uh, made it into the logo and I used that for everything. Oh, wow. That's nice. That's yeah. a nice story. It was pretty cool. So, yeah, he taught us a lot and uh, some of the things you used to say, uh, have you had a lot of the cocktails on the menu or do you drink mis like mostly mixers? Tell him about me. I've had a few. The eye patch. Oh. <laughs> 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 me, I don't even know if I remember them all. Um, we have like two lists of the signature cocktails. So one of them is like a tiki style drink. That's like yes. the, the eye patch and the sea urchin or the porch swing. Those are like really authentic really uh islandy type of tiki cocktails yeah. like true tiki cocktails and then we have the Vern signature drinks and those are the sayings so when you whenever you stood in front of my grandfather like in blocking view of something like the tv yeah he would say you've been drinking too much muddy water because he can't see you through you you know <laughs> so one of the drinks is called muddy water and then we have one that's called to the moon which is basically we've adapted that as our way to say I love you or that I care about you a lot. Because when I was living with him, um, I'm try I'm going to try to tell the story without crying because it's very sentimental. I'm a big baby, so I always cry. Um, when I was living with him, I was also going through like a really bad breakup. Yeah. And he was also recovering from a bunch of sur surgeries because um, he had um, some illness going on. And this was, you know, again, when I was like, 19, 20, 21. So uh, they have an old French style house where I have basically an upstairs apartment, but I would always come through the back door because to like say hi and like walk through the house and yeah. be like, hi guys. So when I walked through the house, I'd say, hi papa. And he would say, how high you want to go? Which is also one of our signature cocktails. Mm -hmm. How high do you want to go? Um, but 
it you know he'd kind of pull in your leg and everything so i would just say i don't know or something stupid i'd be like i don't know and he would jab at me some more so finally and he always got a kick about like pulling my leg like oh how hard do you want to go ha 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 so one day i thought i was being smart right <laughs> so i come in and i go hi papa and he's like how hard do you want to go and i was like to the moon you know and here i am like haha oh, nice. i had something to say this time right, right. and instead of like you know giving it back to me like he normally does he just yeah. like smiled real big and didn't say anything and i was like okay so then it came a thing Every time I came in, I said, hey, Papa, he'd say, how high you want to go? And I'd say to the moon. And it was when he was passing that, you know, we as a family were all together in the home and kind of reminiscing and, and telling stories about him and all that. And I remember my grandmother, I forgot who asked her. I think it was my uncle just asked my grandma. was like, hey, like what did, if Papa wasn't like had to work a hard job and do all this for his life what would he want to do like what did papa want to do you know when he wanted to grow up quote unquote and my grandma said you know papa always said that if he could have picked anything in the world to do he'd be an astronaut so he could go to the moon yeah <laughs> so it oh. kind of like came full circle and i was like oh my god and i was like that's insane so now I know why he never like kind of joked back because he was like, yeah, that he was, that was very, uh, joyful for him, for me to say that. Right. Mm -hmm. So that we have it on the back of our shirts on our staff shirts. It says to the moon and it holds a really special meaning for us. Man, that's pretty dope. Yeah. That's a really good story. Yeah. Corey's crying. <laughs> I showed it to Tia. Yeah. 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 That was good. No, that's. Yeah. Wow. Oh. She got me. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I cry every time I, I don't tell the story. My sister, right? So she, she, you've met my sister. Too. Yeah, I have. Jen. She's like a little bit more on the hard end of things, like more hardcore. So she's always like, Jamie, tell the story, tell the story, tell the story. And I'm like, no, I'm going to cry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was really super special. And I, and the staff, love saying it to each other we love saying it to each other we love it when people order it and and they just they're like wow you really like we feel Vern here and that makes me really happy too for people that have never even met him to be like we feel your grandpa here and you have created like just such a really great space that makes me really happy <laughs> yeah stop crying Corey you're making me cry <laughs> Oh wow! The Vern vibe is the real. Oh, wow. <laughs> it is it, so real. It is definitely real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that is. <laughs> so those are our signature cocktails. They're all oh. named after him and funny things he used to say. That's awesome. Yeah. I know the first thing I'm ordering tomorrow. <laughs> My favorite drink is the muddy water. The muddy water. Yeah, I mean, tasting wise, that's the one I enjoy the most to drink. The to the moon is actually like. So David is our mixologist. Um, he has his own company too, which makes me so happy. He owns David Mixes, which is um, basically he creates and batches uh, premixed syrups for cocktails. Oh, okay. So it's basically like everything except for the alcohol right. when you buy it. So. I reached out to David and said, hey, this is what's going on. And these are kind of like the profiles I'd like to have. And, you know, with Vern and the signature. And I told him all that. And I said, I want to have a bunch that are named after him. And these are some things he used to say. Right. And I told him the story of each one. So when he made to the moon, he basically was like, I really envision like just like a nice sipping cocktail that you drink nice and slow. And he even made this little like lemon peel that looks like a moon that you put on the edge. Yes. That was kind of cool. <laughs> um, so that one's very heavy. I don't drink that one a lot because it's it's definitely a nice strong drink. But the muddy water I really like because that one is whiskey, which is one of my favorites. Okay. And a cola syrup. So uh, Papa used to eat those um, 
candies that taste like root beer. Oh, yes. Those were like way back in the way. day. He loved those. And it's so funny because I didn't even tell David that. He just like did so much research around the time period. And like he even he even looked up like around the time my grandpa was born and what candies he would have been eating and like what oh, was wow. his favorite, you know. And so when he had this drink, we did a tasting before we did the menu. And I was like, this is amazing. It was just so, so good. So that's my favorite one. You curated an entire experience. Yeah. Based off of Papa. Based off of Papa. (laughs) And he, yeah. And the fact that, oh my God. (laughs) You got Corey to cry. (laughs) I started tearing over you. I was like, girl, I still got to talk to you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm getting better. I used to like not even be able to finish. Yeah. It's a, that night was one super emotional, but also super healing. I mean, someone you love is passing away right in front of your eyes, but you're there as a family, as a unit and to hear stories like that. And then, and then to see other elements of someone you love in such a dynamic way that you're like, wow, I didn't know that. No wonder, you know, Uh, in, in so many instances. And not just that one was really good. So I encourage anyone who's coming through a really hard time like that to share stories. And it just can be really healing and powerful. And we've gotten a lot of gifts, too, that are super special. So if you're looking at the bar, you see a picture of the moon. And that is actually the moon of when my grandpa was born. And from the city that he was born. And Lindsay gave that to me on our opening day. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's so awesome. like even like the gifts that we get from people again that have never met him but are just so appreciative of like what he's passed on to our family like me and my sister Jennifer again she makes all the recipes and does almost all of the food she's my bar manager she does the inventory she does all the stockings so, like even like having so many elements that are not just myself, but like the family as a whole and yeah. to have other people enjoy like my whole family just is so, so special. It's like, here, please. I want to share my whole family with everybody. <laughs> and everybody has a good time. Yeah. Christian enjoys it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I was, I was going to ask you what your goal was as far as the owning a bar and like a lot of people would be like, oh, I want to make money. But like for you, it's like, Mm-hmm. it's not about any of that type of stuff you're, mm-hmm. you're different yeah i mean i'm i'm pretty pretty lucky that i have like a full-time job that i enjoy that pays my bills and it's my day-to-day so yes i want to make money at the bar like that is a a goal because i like to make money yeah. at the bar but <laughs> as long as i can pay the staff pay all my bills continue to be able to invest in the business you know buy things that we need buy things that are going to make it better you know, do fun events. We have like our first murder mystery event coming up. I saw that on yeah. social media. What is that? A murder mystery? A murder mystery? Like have everybody in no, I've never done one. Oh, me neither, but I know what it is and I wanna go. I mean, I'm gonna go to this one, obviously, <laughs> but um okay, so a murder mystery is kind of like a interactive dinner almost. Uh you have when you buy your tickets, you get a character. Okay. And the host has like everything all mapped up basically someone dies during this event quote unquote dies right the main character whoever someone dies and you have to figure out who it's like clue the game or that movie yes so but in real life so when you buy your ticket you get a character and it tells you like this is your character for the night and some people have clues that are super important and some people don't you just get to be that character there are clues spread all over the tavern and we're gonna bring everyone in the ticket includes like your drink we're gonna have um dinner so during the interaction like something might happen where like uh maybe my sister and david are hosting it so they might be like oh did you hear that in the tavern on the front end and then like everyone runs over there and there might be a cute a clue or something you're like maybe someone just died you know it's like a it's like all interactive like mini movie basically and the it's, and cool. it's basically to figure out who done it at the very end like who killed who who's the killer there's a killer in your group somebody is the killer right now oh my god you're taking <laughs> experience to a whole yeah. other so, level yeah. in places there's places out there that do it like especially in in 
in Chicago and other pl- other big cities, like you can buy tickets and you can go and it's like this whole experience. So we are really super excited to do it at the tavern. Oh my god, with the staff that she has too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, oh, that's gonna be a good time. I've been to one prior to. <laughs> And that was fun. So I can't wait to see where this one goes. I know. So how do people get tickets for this? So we're actually launching the ticket sales tonight. Oh, tonight? Yeah. So it's all social media. It'll be like a, I think it's Eventbrite. Um, you know, one of the online ticket links that we just yeah. set it up through. So we have 30 tickets that will be available. And we've already had, we already have like a list of people that have called or like said they want to. We're like, ah, we might add an extra day. We don't know oh, yet. Oh, wow. Maybe. But yeah. I can imagine cool. you're gonna have to. You probably because <laughs> so. if it's only thirty, you're gonna go quick. I know. Yeah, bas- I think so. And this one, so this is the first one we're doing. And David had a really cool idea. He basically, kind of based it off the tavern. So it's called the Twisted Corkscrew Murder at the Mystery at the uh, Twisted Corkscrew Tavern. So it's a fake name, but. You yeah. know, it's supposed to be like the tavern yeah. and my sister is hosting it too. So she like gave certain names. So like you never know who someone might be that we might know. <laughs> like it's going to be so cool. Right. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to wait for a ticket. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Van right? Yeah. Um, uh, we're going to, we did like the little teaser flyer is what you saw. Yeah. I yeah. did see a teaser. I was like twisted. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> we're gonna put it out there it'll be on there tonight oh, that, that's mm-hmm. a cool idea right yep, yep so whatever you put we're gonna share it with everybody too yay thank you that'll be fun we have to have a couple of nights wait a second oh what happened can we order our tickets before we <laughs> he's <laughs> trying to get special <laughs> privilege <laughs> yes you can saying, send like, it to you first <laughs> If everybody buys actually, them up, we don't even need to go now. Yeah, actually, it might. That's a good idea because there have been people that are like, put me on the wait list. So we don't really like think of that ahead of time. So it probably should do, See? Probably should do that because there are people that would be pretty mad at me <laughs> that are <laughs> thinking that I have a wait list already. <laughs> right. Oh, you're definitely going to have a wait list. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Definitely. I did not think that. I mean, 30 people. That, that's not a lot. Exclusive, though. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to be part of it? Yes. So David asked me, it's like, do you want to be a character or do you want to know anything about it? And I had never done one before. So I said, no, I don't want to know. I just want to just tell me what you want me to do. I don't want to know anything. He's like, okay, cool. So he's just going to give me a character and that's it. So I'm not going to know anything else. Just like everyone that buys a ticket. I'm just going to be that's there fun. and figure it all out with everybody. <laughs> okay. be, yeah. That would be super fun. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay, Corey. So if we're on a waiting list and we don't get tickets, can we be characters? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be the random character. Right. Corey so comes good. out of the Corey comes out of the utility closet with a hammer. <laughs> Who did it? Right. So <laughs> good. We gotta be there. That'd be awesome. Oh. It's on. It's on Monday the 21st. It's um right after Father's Day weekend. So we figured it might be like a cool gift too if someone wanted to do it with their dad or something. Oh. Mm-hmm. Vern vibes. Right, for sure. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, and you guys also have Tiki Tuesdays. Tiki Tuesday. Tiki Tuesday is super fun, actually. So the next one is this week coming up because it's the last Tuesday of every month is when we do it big. So okay. David comes in and redecorates the entire tavern. And it it's literally like a luau in there. It's so cool. He puts lays up on the lights and he has like baskets of fruit. And he made a whole bunch of drinks that are like a little bit more fruity and more like, you know, more tropical. Yeah. And we have those on special for Tuesdays. We have a bunch of specials on Tuesdays. And he plays only tiki music, which is super fun. <laughs> and then like on the TVs, he puts like uh T- uh, tiki shows like what's that one with the boat the really old show gilligan's island, gilligan's island. yeah he puts so like gilligan's island on and like movies that are beach themed or water themed so it's like a whole environment on tuesday it and it's really really fun we do prizes we do like a raffle um we encourage people to come in dressed up so if you want to wear like a lay or like a hawaiian like a hula fun skirt. T- yeah a fun t-shirt or something like that we had someone come in like a grass skirt and um like a frilly really flowery dress and mm. stuff like that and she won 
A bunch of people actually dressed up the first time. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I was not expecting that. Yeah. And they did. I was like, yeah. Little Vince's little sister, Teresa, won the first night. Mm-hmm. Oh, did she? Yeah. 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 She was really dressed up. Yeah. That's dope. But that's that's right in her lane. You know, she, she's all about doing stuff like that. So, yeah, it was fitting. Yeah. Well, you got to dress up for the next one. Um, Probably not. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear coconuts. <laughs> if you wear coconuts, I would give you a ticket to the murder mystery event. I'm going. <laughs> Who is that weird dude in the corner with the beard and the coconuts? <laughs> oh. oh, that'd be funny. <laughs> that'd be awesome. People would love it. They'd be like, yeah, I'm wearing coconuts next time. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Come on, Corey, let's do it. Okay, fine. Yes! If you're wearing coconuts, I'll throw on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> With coconuts on the <laughs> shirt. I could find one. Outline. <laughs> you just randomly just walk by and grab shirts. <laughs> oh, it's oh, fun. Right. Yeah, it is fun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, oh I, have to, I have to talk about our cheesecakes, though, too. Okay. Have you had... Have I'm you not... Had, no, I heard somebody talking about so it the night Jesus. that we were there, but yeah. we didn't we didn't get to taste anything. So same idea with like supporting small business. D has his own like little bakery. His name is D. And he his bakery is called Leafda Bakery. Leafda? Leafda, which means love. Okay. And there I'm honestly it's the best cheesecake I've ever had in my whole life. I swear to gosh. My friend, wow. he does pop ups a lot, so He'll like, you know, have a pop up table at certain events and like sell his slice of cheesecakes. So that's the first time I ever had it. My girlfriend, Sarah, brought us a slice at the light lounge when we were in the studio downstairs. Okay, that's it. And she was like, you guys, I got you some cheesecakes. I'm like, OK, I tell you, I bit into it and I dreamt about it for three, day, three days after. Oh, I'm, I'm like, that was some good cheesecake. That's amazing. Right. No, I swear. I'm like, oh, not kidding like where can i get another piece i don't even like cheesecake i like it's never my go-to after that i was like i'm i'm obsessed so i met him a few times actually i kept ordering from him for events we did a, a chair dance class with stephanie okay and we reached out and and he was like yeah like maybe i can just set up outside like you know not in the class because you, you guys do your thing but maybe like before the class and the girls can just like buy whatever they want and we're like yes please oh Again, amazing. I was like, okay, I just need more cheesecake, right? Um, but then he, I met him for real, and he's so amazing. Shares the same heart, like wants people to succeed all around him. He's the same way. He, I tell him sometimes, I'm like, can you promote your own cheesecake, dude? Because like all you do is promote other people. Like I need <laughs> you to, I need you to put a, at least a picture up, okay? Like let's do it. Right. So um, we work really well together. I he's actually we call him one of our preferred food partners. Mm. He's on the menu. Because we don't have a full kitchen. We allow people to bring in their own outside food if they cater oh. it. So if someone like orders from a small business or like the sushi joint next door to us, Kubo Sushi, they can bring it in and have dinner while they have drinks here. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. Or like if they decided all of a sudden they're hungry and the flatbreads don't cut it, then they, yeah, we tell them like order local. Like, Kubo is next door. Um, you have a new um, Puerto Rican place that just opened. We have um, Thai food that's hopefully... Um, she'll reopen as she shut down for COVID. But like we okay. always promote like, yeah, bring it in. I'd rather them stay and not leave because they're going to continue to order drinks. But I'd rather have them like buy local than, you know, Uber McDonald's or something. Yeah. Support right. everybody around yeah. you. Of course. Um, so we came up with the idea of having preferred food partners. So they get like a little spot on the menu. And we actually brought in D and we buy from we just like consistently have cheesecake for uh customers now and he created a special little bite just for us that no one else was allowed to buy from him and he came up with it all on his own and he called them bar bites and they're like little round mini cheesecakes and we decorate them with like the different flavors and they're so good oh that's nice i love cheesecake yeah do you yeah I do. you need to have some it will change your life my life <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, next time we go, we, I don't, we didn't have anything to eat last time. I, well, when I no, went with you, no, I don't think we did. No, and then he was telling me about the flatbreads and mm-hmm. now the cheesecakes. Yep, cheesecake bites. So good. 
Yeah, and D is amazing. So he's you, he was there. Yeah, he's real yeah. tall. The, yeah, the tall dude, the super yeah. tall dude. He he was a life of the party. <laughs> That's D. <laughs> D was dope. I was like, oh, he, he's grabbing everybody. Come on, we're gonna go dance. We're yes. gonna get up. Yes. What do you need? The bar? I got you. I, I was know. Like, oh, this guy. I know he works just as hard as we do, and he doesn't even work there. I tell him like, D, can you, can you just let me pay you something or like? <laughs> I'll pay you in drinks. You know, I mean, I'm always like, he does wait. He does so much for us. It's insane. He even comes in on his, you know, free time and is like, what do you need drilled down? I'll, I'll put in those handles for you. And his wife is the sweetest thing ever too. She um, always comes in and brings us our orders and everything. Like they're the best. <laughs> it, it's cool. You guys are like creating a that's family. Awesome. Right. Like, yeah. Absolutely. That's the coolest thing. It's the best way to do business. Yeah. I think if everybody has the same vibe, like can want to help each other. Yeah. Be great. Yeah. Then you feel good there. For sure. Yeah, because you feel it while you're there. Like yeah. while he was running around, I was like, man, I'm having fun just watching him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's making sure everybody's good. He has right. the most fun too. He's always he's always smiling. Yes, he is. Yes. yes. Yeah, he is. Always smiling. No, just, it was it was a great vibe. Yeah. Um yes. Corey, you had some other questions that you wanted to to ask. Well, what do you mean this guy? <laughs> <laughs> I already asked you questions. I asked you about your favorite part, what and your favorite drink. Yes, um, <laughs> I would say expansion. Any oh. thoughts of expansion? Yes, oh. actually. So we kind of figured out all the numbers, and hopefully, I can be done completely. Like the bar is doing well, but obviously, there's the build out and all the things that you have to pay for. Um, I'm thinking. Within the next three years, I'd like to, <laughs> this might sound, I don't know if this is going to sound crazy. I just want to pick a state that I really want to visit a lot and open one there. Mm, yeah. I want to really? be like Arizona. I love Arizona. Flagstaff area where the weather's always nice. <laughs> right. And open one there. I already have like a theme, all the things in my head. And I have, I would like to open. So we opened the first day is on my dad's, not my papa, but my dad's birthday. Your dad's birthday, yeah. Right. Because he, we wanted a special date. This is going to make you cry again, Corey. No, I'm just kidding. There we go. Get him. <laughs> my, um, during COVID, like the quarantine, the shutdown, my dad yeah. turned 60 and he didn't get to do anything fun for his birthday. Like I literally had to like watch a video and like FaceTime, oh, you know, uh... like, hi, bye. I was still working and it wasn't like good for me to be there with them. So my sister was there just at the house, social distancing. Yeah. Um, but he didn't get to do anything. He literally like took pictures and we sent Snapchats back and forth. So that kind of sucked. And then in September, he was diagnosed with cancer. And that was kind of crazy. So we went through that whole time of like being shut down and having to be at home with not only not being able to be together, but then having him have a serious illness yeah. and going through surgeries and trying to support each other the best we can as a family, but not really being able to. Like, how do you drive your dad to the hospital for an appointment without also worrying, like, am I going to get him get sick, him sick yeah. because I'm within you know six feet of him? So it was a lot. And pretty sucky. My dad's a really happy dude. You know, he's like super laid back. That's like his thing. And super hardworking. Like he almost didn't want to take off of work. And we had like until the doctor forced him to like, dad, just take some time off. Right. Mm -hmm. Probably where I get it from. <laughs> um, but when my sister came up with the idea, this is what she told me. She said we should open on dad's birthday. Because. He's trying to surprise you by pretending he's someone else. He wants to call in and book a party like and pay for it, like pay the rental fee and book a party and pay you for it for his birthday. But then maybe not be there because he can't be there. But yeah. like and he would never tell me that because he knows I wouldn't take the money from him. I would just have his birthday party. Yeah. Right. So I was like, no way. She's like, yeah. He was like going to make me call and like give a fake name or something. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. 
So instead, we like, yeah, go ahead, do that. But instead, we decided to open the bar itself on his birthday. And that way we always have a way to remember him, to honor him, and for him to have a special, like since the last one was so crappy that he has a really special birthday this year. So he still couldn't be around a lot of people. We brought him in early. So we we open at 3.30. We're open 3.30 to 1 every day. And we have a 3 o'clock license. So, like, we stay open sometimes longer. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it was all planned out. Me and my sister were going to surprise him. Pick him up early. Uh, He can really... He's supposed to eat, like, high fatty foods, like milkshakes and cheesecakes and things oh. like that to put weight on. Because he lost so much weight with the right. um, treatments and just everything going on so we're like this is perfect we're gonna pick him up early walk him over there surprise and then like have lots of milkshakes right (laughs) (laughs) and cheesecake and it ended up being like the shittiest day or um everything just everything that went wrong could go went wrong and we were just laughing the entire time because my dad was in a bad mood because he wanted to go to the grocery store, but I wanted to pick him up. So he was like, okay, fine, I guess, you know? And we were, and my sister and I were laughing. We were like on the phone. I was like, well, dad's in a bad mood, but I'm, I'm on my way to pick him up right now. And she's like, of course he is. <laughs> and then um, my sister went to a Blue Box Cafe, which is a little cafe next to us, and ordered like five different types of milkshakes so that we could all share them and try all these flavors and she put them in the refri- the freezer that me and her had actually built it's in the studio like we actually had to figure out how to put this thing together apparently we don't know what we're doing and did not put it together the right way so she put them all in the door of the freezer and the, the door fell off and all of the milkshakes no. fell on the floor yeah it was just like blah everywhere so oh. Again, we're laughing. She's like, called me back. She's like, apparently we don't know how to put together our fridge. And I'm like, why? She sent me a picture. I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) Then it starts raining. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then we're trying to, like, also coordinate my grandma to be there at some point because we want, you know, it's like named after her late husband. Of course, we want Grandma Barry to be there, too. So all these things, just all the things. And as soon as we get, we finally get him out where we're walking him up to the sidewalk and we go, you know, we get, we we videotaped and everything. We're just like, surprise, happy birthday. (laughs) Actually, we're opening today. And like, you could just see him like going from this like kind of crappy, cruddy mood, like just so happy. Like he was like, what? okay cool and we had a little red ribbon and he like karate chopped it and we're like <laughs> yes okay and and then that was it it was i think it was one o'clock in the afternoon we sat there at the bar as a family my grandma my dad my mom my sister and my uncle who drove my grandma and was just us and we had drinks and he got to try some of the drinks and i showed him the drink list and it was just so really beautiful mm-hmm. and that's why we opened on my dad's birthday, the twenty third. Oh, wow. nice. You know, Papa Vern was watching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably why. I was. Me and Jen were like, "Yeah, he's probably just joking on us. Milkshakes, rain." Could you imagine? <laughs> 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 oh man, that was pretty funny. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was an adventure, was for sure. <clears throat> um, so it's expansion. I want to call one after my dad. And the idea is I want to call it uh, Jim's Ale House and Winery because my dad loves beer, but he also knows how to make his own wine, which was passed down from all the men in the family. So oh, that's cool. like another space, I would just call it Jim's Ale House and Winery and then have it really laid back because my dad is like the chillest dude. Right. Yeah. So. Wow, that sounds great. You want to open up one with me? <laughs> no one will know that you're the owner. You can just sit there. At the corner, <laughs> the of, the corner of the bar. At the, the bar. corner of the bar. <laughs> Drinking wine. He's wow. like, this is great. Yes. <laughs> so you work with your sister. Yes. If I worked with my sister, I think we would have burned the bar down. Really? Yeah. 
But the relationship you guys have, it's like, it's oh. super supportive. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't mean that sometimes you don't want to punch <laughs> each other in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> definitely. In the face. I mean, <laughs> she's a lot taller than I am, so I'd have to kind of reach up there. But yeah, um, I mean, we have our ups and downs. We're sisters. We fight. There's plenty of times where we do not agree on something. But at the end of it, we're always supporting each other. You know, like that, as long as at the end of it, we're supporting each other. We've had, we definitely communicate in different ways also, which is something that I've learned. Just the way that we communicate as people yeah. is totally different. So I've had to learn that and she's had to learn kind of the same thing. So yeah, there's definitely been days where like, I want to throw her out the window and vice versa, but we work pretty well together. No, you do. Right, you do. <laughs> that you do. Yeah. <laughs> she does a good job. The whole circle you have there. Great staff. Yes, for sure. And you, you have connections to each one from a different place. Yeah, basically. So along all those jobs that I had working, serving, bartending, hosting, um, when I started bartending, uh, again, I would if there was ever like a job opening or opportunity or someone was like, yeah, I'd like a second job. Like I would be like, yeah, come here. I'll teach you. I don't care. You know, I'll totally teach you how to bartend. And that's another thing. A lot of places they either want you to already have experience or they don't want to teach you. Yeah. You know, um, I'm the I'm the opposite. I, everyone goes through the same training with me. Everyone learns the same thing. I will take I would actually prefer to have people that have never bartended before. Because then I can train them and know that they know all of the in and outs of like how we do things or, you know, uh, what I know will mesh really well with the team already. Yeah. So, yes, I when I worked at the hangout, like another bar, when yeah. I was managing there, I taught a few friends. I taught them how to bartend. I taught my sister how to bartend when I was at the bar where um, the one that didn't go so well, that one, I uh, Angie. I taught her how to bartend. Okay. Yeah. She works on Friday nights. Yes. Mm -hmm. So true. basically, I think almost everybody except for Teslin. Okay. Teslin. I think I taught everybody else how to bartend at one point, even if it was just like a little bit. Like even David, we started, he worked at the martini room with me. And at one point when he was training, like he trained a few days with me. So I didn't start his training, but I definitely was there for it, I right. guess you could say. So we all met each other. We all have the same knowledge. We all have the same background of like what we know works and what doesn't work. And when we were ready to open, I didn't even have like a hiring page or anything. It was just like, I already had everything I needed and everyone just was there and ready to support. I think the entire project kind of was like that. It Everything that I was so stressed out about as soon as I stopped worrying about it it just fell into place that's nice so it's very like thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if it was intentional or if it was just like because of all of the work that i had already done it was like in place because of that but it it was nice it was it was a blessing if anything yeah no because you can tell that you go into the, like the smallest details like i was sitting there and i was like what are those cards in the cups trivia that my aunt made that your aunt made? Yeah. It's a family affair. I'm <laughs> telling you. For sure. Did you notice there's a fishing and hunting one? There's like each deck is different. It has different. Um, oh, no. I just grabbed the one deck. Oh, each deck has. They're all color coded and each deck is different. And one's like fishing and hunting trivia. And one is like questions. Get to know you kind of date trivia. Oh. One of them is Harry Potter trivia. Mm, I would have lost it. That yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. She made them. Her and my cousin sat. My cousin just typed them all up one day, laminated, cut them, color coordinated them, brought them to the bar. Yeah. But it's cool because nice. I've never seen that before. Right. And when we're there and we're, we're see, I, I've been watching people just reach for these cups with cards. I'm like, what's everybody looking at these cups for? What are these cards? <laughs> business cards? Like, he's grabbing a lot of business cards. Right. <laughs> Stop taking all the business cards. Yeah. And then Corey's like, shut up, Norman. <laughs> it's a game. I was like, what? He's like, watch. And we were doing it at the end of that shift I yeah. think, while we were sitting down. I was oh, like, oh, we were. Yeah, yes. for a little bit. I remember while we were closing up. That was, yeah. It, I was like, this was such a good idea. Yeah. Wasn't it the animal ones for a while? 
I, I like think so. The groups of animals. Yes. Yeah. That and I the think one. there might have been some fishing ones in there too. I probably got mixed up. Yeah, but yeah. yeah. There were some fishing ones in there. Yeah, because remember we were like, "What's the right? most important part of the rod?" Or something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we yes. were laughing. Yes. I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. Do you know the answer? I don't. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not good at trivia. No, not even our own. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's cool. Like you could be sitting next to a stranger and just pull this deck out and just be like, "I got a question for you." <laughs> oh yeah, the staff do it all. The- I actually was like, "Hey, like, uh, put it." I I moved him off the bar, so that the staff has to like actually take it to them now. Okay. So that uh, way, it starts a conversation. Yeah. So they can say. If they just see someone kind of chilling, or if it's like first date vibes and it's a little awkward for them, be like, "Oh, go take them trivia, like go go tell them about it," you know. Oh. So they actually take it over there now and be like, "Oh, you know, you guys, we have trivia. This, do you like Harry Potter?" And you know, if it's no, like, "Well, we have this one. Like, this is some good questions." But like, yeah, hang out, play, like, do the thing, and it's super fun. And people they like it because it gives you know, if you are on a first date, that can be really. Of course. Oh, yeah. awkward and like what do you talk about so it, it's really been fun so far a lot of people like it and the staff likes it and then like you said they'll take one at a time and like go ask a random person they'll be like did you know we have trivia and they'll be like answer this <laughs> and then like <laughs> then run away after that right. but it is pretty fun no yeah even the little details like that i was like oh this is a dope spot to hang out in <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, yeah can't wait to go back good well, we're I'm going yeah. back tomorrow. I don't know about you. <laughs> What's tomorrow? <laughs> Tuesday. Yeah. That's all I need is Tuesday. Oh, Tiki Tuesday. <laughs> no, today's Sunday. Oh, yeah, tomorrow's Sunday. Monday. Oh. Tomorrow's Monday. So I'm so confused. <sighs> now I'm confused. <laughs> he said tomorrow's Tuesday. I'm right. like, wait a Tuesday. minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, wait, where am I supposed to be at right now? Like, oh my God. <laughs> no one's like, we thing. missed something. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Got a little ahead of myself. Just a wee bit. (laughs) Okay, on the opposite side of the spectrum, what's been your favorite part of owning your own bar so far? Just my favorite, favorite part is creating so many opportunities for other people like that I and meeting so many people through it and just having the feedback uh, that people feel really welcomed there. That's... Like every time someone says that, I'm just like, oh, thank God. Yes. Like, I'm really glad. That's the whole purpose of the space is just so that you feel really warm and invited and you can have a really safe place to go and have a date night, date night or hang out with your guys or girls night, you know, like, right. but the place you'd want to go for that, not that you just end up there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so far it's been good and people really enjoyed it. So. It makes me happy. That's the best part. I think my least favorite thing is telling people that I'm the owner. Because what do you say after that? Someone is like, she's the owner. I'm like, hi. Well, yeah, you can start off with hi. That's a good one. That's that's a good start. What do you want me to do now? I don't do magic tricks every every time. But um, (laughs) well, you know, they're like, hey, I'm like, hi. So they're excited to meet me. But then like, that is awesome. I just. One, I think we mentioned before, I really just want people to authentically have a good time there, not yeah. not because they know that I'm the owner. Mm-hmm. I want them to, whether or not they know I'm the owner, just to ha- be able to say the same things. Yeah, give you, the, give you like real feedback. Yes, yes. And even if it's bad feedback, like the bathroom door. Yeah. The bathroom door is crap. Corey was hurt staring back at that door <laughs> waiting for it to close. <laughs> But it's getting fixed and we're making changes. But, you know, even bad feedback, I, I I want to hear that, too. So, yeah, sometimes I I get a little emotionally overwhelmed when people want to introduce me as the owner. Because sometimes I'd like to know you as, like, just you. Hey, hey yeah. you. Hey, you. <laughs> and not have just the title in front of you. Yeah. Like, oh, that's the owner. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I talk different. Yeah, that's not the super important thing. It's it is nice because it's a lot of validation and it's a lot of uh it is and the a sense proud, of accomplishment, yeah. Yeah, it's like an it, it is definitely like I know that I did it. I'm here. I got it done. But 
that's good and and done now. You know, the newspaper articles came out. Yes, all we, those. <laughs> yeah, you know that they know locals know, and now I can kind of step back from that role and really let the staff be the face of, you know, Vern's, and I can be there too, but enjoy it in even more authentic way. I hope. You're a very authentic person. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And a natural in front of the microphone. Oh. <laughs> hey, natural. It's taken Corey a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't messed with you this whole time. The it's whole really time. nice. I was, I'm waiting for, waiting for the. Uh, for what? Tea, the, well, I was waiting for someone to be able to back Corey up. What do you oh, think? Oh, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I know, but I'm waiting. See? It's going to be like, take one for the team. I will you have done nothing. <laughs> Do you need tissue? No. But... <laughs> okay, so we definitely want to know. Tell us about Vern's, how to find you, what's coming up. Yes, all the things. So we are downtown Elgin, Illinois. Uh, Elgin, you know, is kind of growing and getting pretty popping and popular, but uh, it's a real old town. And I think Elgin area is mostly known for the casino boat which is yeah. on the river. So we're right past the casino boat. That's where we are. Um, we're actually the first building um, that you come to on the left-hand side if you're leaving the boat. So uh, it's in a really old building. Our, uh, we, we tried to keep as much of the aesthetic as we could. So the floors are the original terrazzo flooring. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Really, really pretty. And we have... Uh, like a more vintage kind of dive bar vibe. We found an old photo that we kind of modeled off of it. Okay. And it was from a bar in 1920 in Elgin that we just happened to like find. And it was in Elgin. So it's like awesome. Um, We have a speakeasy room, which is um, you come in through the front and it's the tavern is what we call it. Mm-hmm. And you come in in the middle, right past the bathrooms is a room with chandeliers and we're going to put some big, like, really heavy red velvet curtains in there and fun oh. wallpaper. Yeah. We call that the speakeasy. So okay. we have events there and it's available for, like, rental or if someone wants to reserve the space. So far, we've done, like, birthday parties, um, wedding receptions, after um, after hours, like, wedding receptions, you know, because, like, mm. after the even after the reception because we're open late. Um, we're open from 3.30 to, oh, I'm sorry, 4.30 to 1. And we have a 3 a.m. liquor license, which hardly ever happens anymore. So in the summertime, we're going to expand all of our hours and be open later, too. Oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Um, we're going to do a beer garden, and we're going to call that the garden. So it's going <laughs> to be so, yeah, right. the garden. tavern, speakeasy, garden. So the garden, we're just going to do... Like really nice planters, level out the ground on the side of the building and have little lights and like mismatch furniture for like the lawn furniture. And it'll be like really kind of, I don't know, like boho chic slash, eclect- we'll just call it eclectic. It'll be okay. very eclectic. eclectic. <laughs> um, and yeah, some of the events that we do, we do the Tiki Tuesdays, last Tuesday of the month. Uh, we collaborate with one of the bartenders. Her name is Teslin, and she has um, kind of like her own business going on. We do events that are like really forward with figure drawing. Um, it's called Kink and Draw. Kink and Draw. Kink and Draw. So she has a theme. Every, it's the last Monday of every month. And so the first figure drawing was Shibari uh, themed, which is the art of Japanese body tying when they do the the ropes like bondage oh, the band. Oh. Um, so that was pretty cool actually it was really fun so the model you know um tesla did the ties on her and she modeled and everyone did the drawing and they had drinks and wine and listened to music and um so that was really nice and they did like a few different um poses and then she goes she went through like the the art of shibari and like mm. the background of it and kind of like the history of it so that was cool too and then she has one coming up that it's like um sex kitten theme so little like cat sex kitten it's super cute it's gonna be super it's super cute so i'm I'm pretty excited to see what she's going to like have the the background of that being like where that kind of like culture comes from we have the murder mystery event coming up 
So that'll be in June, June 21st on a Monday. And we might have to add another date. It looks like we might have to do two, but we are going to have those regularly as well and have different themes. We are going to um, do themed cocktail nights in the future. So I was really sad because I wanted to get these tickets for... Uh, the mermaid bar that I saw in Chicago. Did you guys see oh, that? Yes, oh, yes, I dude. saw that. So I bought tickets, but I haven't got my tickets yet. So I'm about to like cancel my, yeah, they charge my car and everything, but I haven't got like the email confirmation. So I yeah. don't know what's going on because I'm kind of like, don't be a scam, please. But um, I really, really am excited about stuff like that. So we want to do like, you know, Harry Potter themed nights or, you know, I don't know, whatever you can think of. 1920 flapper nights i love disney so anything disney would be amazing for me like (laughs) nice if we did our own little mermaid kind of thing but basically we have all the fun events right and we're gonna do am i missing any events oh we have first fridays oh first fridays first friday of the month we have a dj in the speakeasy so that's Mm. that middle room and that's fun just just really nice vibe everyone so far, I really liked it, that first one. Right. Uh, in June, we have a, th- a DJ Thursday, so it's going to be called, the night itself is called It's a Vibe. It's a Vibe. It's a Vibe. And it's just going to be like really easy listening music, kind of like mm, hip hop, easy listening, maybe a little bit old rock and roll. Like It's just a little bit of every genre, but you know, a nice space where you can dress up and you can come out and have drinks and bring a date and stuff like that. So that'll be on every Thursday in June. No, nice. Mm -hmm. I love that you have like themed events and like Mm -hmm. different things that you're going to do. Not just, Hey, we're a bar. You show up, you order your drinks. (laughs) Yeah. So much more life to it. Yeah. We want to add karaoke. I'm just looking into all the legalities there. I know there's a lot of licensing and stuff and I know some people just do it anyway but i, I yeah. want to figure it out first and then i think we're gonna do it every uh friday night in the speakeasy because there's not a lot of events that go on there either every friday or every tuesday that would be fun oh, karaoke <laughs> karaoke <laughs> Damn. I can totally see you doing karaoke. Hey, <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was waiting for Corey to sing again. What's going on? I know. <laughs> I, I missed it. You said karaoke and we both looked over. <laughs> okay, let's try one more time. Okay. Ka- karaoke. You guys didn't do it. No, I didn't do it either on that one. I was waiting Corey, to see you. What see? What I knew he was going to do something. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I'm sorry. No, we're not doing oh, it. Again. <laughs> I knew it. he looked at me like. <laughs> <laughs> That's my singing voice. How do you like it? I like it. I like it. No. I don't trust my. <laughs> I don't trust. Oh, I don't no. trust my. Hmm. So yeah, we do lots of events. We're located downtown Elgin. We're pretty easy going. <laughs> we have fun drinks. Come see us. Great personalities, also. Yeah. Yeah. really great staff yeah. best staff ever you, that's like yeah. most of my facebook posts are best staff ever d will probably make you dance <laughs> he will <laughs> he will but it's fun yeah it is it's a really good time yeah. so if anybody's ever in the elgin area i highly recommend you stop by Vern's tavern as yes, it's 76 south grove avenue right off of grove and yeah we're right there Pass the boat. Awesome spot. Awesome vibe. Great staff. An amazing, inspirational owner. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for coming on here with us. It was really fun, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that I did. I'm a little nervous at first, but you guys are awesome. <laughs> thank you. Especially Corey. Especially Corey. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you keep making them laugh. Keep, going. <laughs> keep making them laugh. You're, yeah. You're our favorite? Huh? Am I? Yeah. Great. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'm good. trying yeah. to make you blush. <laughs> Great. She's gonna she's trying to now. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Norma. You told her to do that while I was in the bathroom, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you guys. Thank you so much for Yay. coming. Thank you. thank you guys. If you stay till the end of the episode, love you guys. Appreciate it. From Corey. Jamie. Oh, from me. <laughs> And myself. (laughs) Be safe. Love each other. 
Peace.